All right, guys, we're going to try something different this week. We're going to call it Emo Arguments. Hirsch and I are going to take two songs. We're going to argue about them, figure out which one's best, and we're going to go from there. If you guys like it, subscribe, drop a comment down below. If you disagree with what we say, if you agree with what we say, go down below. And also, we're going to count on you guys to pick who the winner is in the comment section down below. This week, we're going to go with You're All Right by Motion City Soundtrack and Alive with the Glory of Love by Say Anything. Which song's better? We're going to kick things off with Alive with the Glory of Love by Say Anything. Hirsch, what do you like about this song? All right. To, to, to prep this before we get into the song, uh, everybody knows that this isn't my primary genre of music that I would say I have a background in. So I come from the like the 90s hip hop backpack type golden era uh, hip hop music, very lyrical stuff, which is why it pulled me to this song uh, pretty quickly. Uh, even though, it, like I said, it starts out with this guy t talking about doing somebody on site in the foyer. Uh, after that, it gets very interesting. And I knew nothing about, I've heard the song, you know, we played the song a million times at Emo Night, blah, 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 but I, don't, I never sat and listened to the words. So after I listened to the words, it brings me to another point where I'm like, oh my God, what is he talking about? Which was very odd that I come to listen to the song and I'm hearing him say things about uh, hiding and the Axis powers and gold fillings and and rings and um watches and stuff it's like holy shit he's talking about the holocaust i'm like oh my god that's crazy another preface is that in high school i took german which most people don't do <laughs> i don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing but i had a lot of background learning about that kind of thing from german class so i was like wow he's talking about two people in the holocaust and then after i I looked up the song. Is it's about his grandparents or his great grandparents? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, this is pretty, pretty crazy. It's like deep for like somebody in high school. Like, which, like, if when this song came out on a lyrical level, I feel like this is the better song lyrically. I mean, musically, it's not groundbreaking. I don't think in any shape or form. Like, nobody's out there, you know shredding or like getting crazy on the guitar or anything like that it's pretty basic stuff you know from what i could see or from, from what i can hear you're 100 percent right it's it's about the holocaust and what's crazy is it's it's off of uh one of bemis's max bemis the lead singer of say anything one of their early records and um he was probably like 16 to 18 years old when he wrote it which is also kind of crazy to think about um but like you said being consumed by like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds, right? Heavy, heavy content in there. Yeah. I, I'm going to lean on you as the series goes for like more of the musical stuff because I don't know anything about like music composition, anything like that. But I'm a lyric guy. Like lyrics are what appeals to me about music over, over any beat or anything like that, right? Yeah. So I remember hearing this the first time it came out and just being blown away by that. And also um, I, you mentioned a little bit of, of hip hop and this appealed to you in that way. Max Bemis always kind of flirted with or or had like a relationship to hip hop. This is about his Jewish heritage. Um, early on in the early records, uh, his Judaism comes out a lot. And then later, as he progresses as a musician and progresses through, he becomes like a born again Christian. And religion is always a they're they're pop records though, right? And they're they're not religious records, but it's always a prevalent theme in his music. Um, and and it can get heavy at times. And but the way he approaches it in a lot of songs, like um, in defense of a genre, he has a song called Jesus Died a Jew. Um, and it's about like crucifixion and everything like that. And then later on, it's about his conversion from Judaism to Christianity. And, and he, he tackles race, race issues and, and um, all different things from, from a very different perspective. Uh, all the while, especially when this album was written specifically being manic, self-medicating and, and really self-destructive behavior. This this is one of my bands that got me into music, um, that made me love this genre. You know, this album's one of my favorite. Is a real boy, one of the the hallmarks of emo early two thousands music to me. Uh, my first date with my my wife was to a Say Anything concert, 
so they hold a, a special place in my heart. I'm a big fan of it from that perspective, uh, from lyrics, from a bigger meaning to it. Just Max Bemis in general, I've always been been a huge fan of. It's like a it's like a religious theme that doesn't scream religion, which is why I can also stand behind it because like it's all fine and good if you're like a Christian rock band or you know this that or the other thing, but like I don't want to hear Kanye doing Christian music. It's not a good idea. Like yeah, okay, you won a Grammy, but you know how that is. Uh, oh yeah. But, yeah, if you can make your point without overtly saying it, like literally, <laughs> that mm-hmm. you've done it. We're in a different place. I don't know if this song would be received the same now um, with with where the world is. Like you said, I think he, he tackles religion. He tackles his, a historical event and kind of tells a love story in there at the same time. Um, set to pop punk music, um, right. emo music. And I think that that's... There's something to be said for for all of that being wrapped into a song, especially by a 17 year old writing it. Uh, I'll go back and lean on you know um, some other hip hop stuff like when when some of these you know uh, groundbreaking hip hop masterpieces were made, these guys were 17, 18, 19 years old, and you can't believe how somebody can write something with such depth and uh, int- intricacy at 18. It just crazy. And sometimes they never top it. So Max Bemis today could put out something that's just head and tails better than this song, but it's not, he's never going to put something out that sounds like this again. Exactly. Right. So whoever is judging that's always going to judge it against these early songs that they're so emotionally connected to. And I don't know that, that any artist would ever get the same shake with their later stuff, especially this far, far out removed from it. It's kind of run of the mill. It's catchy. Mm-hmm. You'll you'll remember it, but other than that, eh. so there that uh, I don't know that there's anything about the song I don't like. Um, these are going to be tough for me. I think as we progress further through this series, but I mean, we're coming out with two bangers, two of my favorite songs of all time. Um, I think there's better songs on this album, I could say, but again, like a lot of the songs on that album specifically and early say anything. I don't know that like in our current culture or current cultural mindset would do what they they did then now i just don't know that they'd be accepted so moving on to uh you're all right if you take all the ingredients with this song it's probably the perfect emo record if you think about what that is and who it's geared to it's a, it's a catchy tune the lyrics are about stuff that teenagers relate to 100 percent, especially now and in you know the mid 2000s up till till now it's a it's a huge ordeal you know it uh i got out of it it's about a kid that's overly self-conscious has add ocd uh is is really worried about if this girl is okay <laughs> like that kid that just he's overly nice he's like asks the girl 100 times are you okay is everything cool like you always see that guy in the movie and he yeah. always never gets the chick because he's always asking her if she's okay. And then the jerk comes over and says she's, you know, too skinny or something and she loves him. So that's, I mean, that's what I got out of it. It's just like you take all the ingredients that you like, think what a emo song should be and uh, who it's geared to. And that's this, this track. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, especially from an outside perspective, again, we play this at emo night all the time, but to actually sit down and listen to everything that, that goes into the song you probably your first time right to dissect it like yeah. that yeah an intimate relationship with the song for 20 years or whatever i've had justin pierre the lead singer of motor city soundtrack definitely battles some emotional and uh yeah. and substance issues as well right yeah. yeah um this is definitely their signature song and they were heralded out of the gate as the next blink 182 they were going to pick up where blink 182 left off they were going to be the next big thing Everybody thought they were going to be the first band, like kind of in this new wave of emo to fulfill their contract, which nobody was doing at the time and put out all the records on it and self-destruction uh, kind of got in the way. They put out a couple really amazing albums and they put out one not so great one. But this song specifically, I think, speaks to the mental state of somebody in extreme disarray. It's a song that speaks to lack of mental health. Uh, and I think that 
a lot of people that listened to that genre at that time were able to relate to that and, and focus in on it at, to a certain point. I, I, I've always wondered if you, like you said, is he speaking to a girl or I've always wondered, is he just speaking to himself? Cause he, he speaks of the things that like, like his OCD is making him focus mm-hmm. on. Right. Uh, counting the tiles in the ceiling, checking, just checking random things. 20 year old me listening to this song. Like I remember this hitting on MTVU and, and being obsessed with this band in general, but like, I'm sick of the things I do when I'm nervous, like cleaning the oven and checking my tires, counting the number of the tiles in the ceiling, head for the hills, the kitchen's on fire. Like Having these two bands up against each other is really an interesting juxtaposition. Both lead singers with endless potential that had the weight of the, the, the scene and the world on their shoulder at that time and just mentally weren't in a place to fully take advantage of it. Bemis has a lot of songs about that, uh, both given all the opportunities in the world and just not able to fully capitalize on it those bands at that time could have done anything or toured with anybody or gone anywhere and it it seemed like they were the only thing holding themselves back unfortunately i mean you you, that story plays out across music i how many times how many times you, you these these acts come up have great success and and you know it seems like the industry just puts something so heavy on them that that it can never they can never pick it up. These songs mean so much to people, mm-hmm. right? Like, I think that, especially at that time, like, the awareness of mental health wasn't what it is now, right? Like, we were just starting to get into the whole idea of, like, normalizing people on medication. Two guys here touching on on those issues, but also both that that in their music talk a lot about self-medication, and give warnings against it that maybe if at the time it didn't help them, hopefully they're both in good places now, but if at the time it didn't help them, maybe it helped other people. Back in those early 2000s, like you said, it was just starting to be normalized and stuff. And it was like really taboo for a long time. Like you didn't talk about it. Like the, the awareness wasn't there. Like it was just like a lot of things that have come to light over the past 10, 10 ish or so years, just like crazy before before their time just because you you're ingrained in the hip-hop world sort of how i'm ingrained in the emo world um as as fandom goes and i think it's just starting just now starting to become more talked about and more acceptable Mm -hmm. in in that genre and culture and even still i think kicking the door down right um and which is something that historically that is not a hip-hop thing right because in if 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 you if you were to think about what's politically correct today or not even politically correct but just so acceptable early 90s and mid 90s hip hop music was probably some of the worst stuff and if you were able to to listen to that and be a normal person afterwards and not let you know if you were just to take it at face value and see it as entertainment and you were you know uh now you know and no one is half the battle <laughs> yeah i mean imagine eminem coming out with half of his stuff now eminem wouldn't exist today um but if you had a pick between these two songs you could only you could only listen to one ever again which one are you picking to listen to ever again it would be say anything i would like to say that i believe the better emo song is motion city okay i respect that so i mean if i had to pick one only and this pains me because say anything's like probably one of my favorite bands as a whole from the emo genre i would pick so i would pick everything is all right by motor city soundtrack if i only had to pick one of these songs i think there's better say anything songs i like their catalog as a whole better and i like that band in the long term but if i had to pick between one of these songs one cease to exist i'm going everything is all right by motion city soundtrack i just think that that song is their quintessential song from their catalog all right guys i hope you enjoyed this and we're gonna try to do it every week we're gonna switch up the format just a little bit so i think moving forward what'll happen is i'll pick one song to argue for hirsch will pick one song to argue for we'll argue against the other one and it'll be more of a debate emo arguments emo arguments something uh along those lines so subscribe drop a comment down below we want to know down in the comment section what song do you think is better who do you think won this debate 
this really wasn't a debate, but in the future, we'll want to know that. And uh, leave the comments down below. Hit the subscribe button. We'll see you real soon.